Welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be answering all the questions that were in the comments on the initial review video of my Lincoln 200M 4-in-1 welder. Probably have a couple of beers while I do this. Grab one yourself if you're curious. I'm having a uh, Black Ops Pale Ale. If you haven't seen the first review video, I'll put a link up here somewhere. It was about 18 months ago that I bought this thing. No affiliation with Lincoln or tool shops or anything like that. Paid full price for this. So yeah, check that video out if you want to know more about, you know, the unboxing and the initial setup and the specs and that sort of stuff if you haven't seen it already. In this video, I'll put chapters down the bottom. So if you're looking for an answer to a specific question, scroll along down the bottom and you can jump straight to that part. Anyway, let's get into it. <laughs> Stacks of the questions were, you know, what settings do I need to weld X thickness material? One person asked, you know, what's the TIG settings to weld 1.6 mil stainless pipe? Is there any chance you can do a video of the settings you have found for say 1.5 millimeter and three millimeter alloy? You know, welding stainless and alloy, very different things. Also gas rates, you know, can you do a video showing the settings for AC and the gas flow rates to weld aluminium? If I'm welding mild steel, what do you think the limit on the thickness would be? Would it weld 10 mil plate to 10 mil plate? So there's a lot of different questions there, different thicknesses, different materials, possibly even different processes there. I think the 10 mil to the 10 mil plate would be MIG, when those other ones will all be TIG. You know, one of them was DC TIG, one was AC TIG. I'm no expert at all, but what I do is I use an online calculator to get in the ballpark, and then I tune it from there, depending on how the weld um, goes down, how it turns out and then I just dial it in from there. I'll put a link in the description down below. The one I mainly use is from Miller, Miller Welders. Um, yeah, so it's millerwelds.com. Pretty much you type in the thickness, the type of weld, you know, whether it's a, a butt weld, a lap weld, a fillet weld, um, and material type, and then it'll tell you um, the range of amps, frequency, and gas flow, I think, from memory. So that puts you in the ballpark. Other than that, there's plenty of YouTube videos. If you just search, you know, what the problem is you have, like if you need to weld really thick material and you're pushing the limits of the machine, which I sort of was when I welded the, um, I think it was 10 mil alloy plate for the coupler on the toy hauler. Um, I had to have that pretty much right up at about 180 to 200 amps, you know, full power. But to get the extra penetration, to do it, you know, I was putting the hertz down, so it's lowering the wave, it's sort of, you know, swinging into it deeper. Well, not deeper, but spending more time on each side of the, of the uh, polarity. And at one point I was using square wave instead of sine wave, uh, and I was also preheating with a gas torch. <laughs> so you probably don't want to be doing that. You probably definitely, like that's telling me I need a bigger welder to do that was really pushing the limits of it, but I managed to get by um, and get it done. So yeah, trail hasn't broken yet. So I guess um, success, that worked. The hitch is on. The next question was quite a few comments on uh, could I review a uni MIG machine? So I'm definitely not brand loyal. You know, I did have a SIG weld machine before that. Um, I went to this Lincoln because of the multi process. Um, uni MIG do look like they make a great machine. I do watch. Um, their little videos they put on TikTok and things like that. I'd love to review their multi-process machine. I can't remember what it's called, but the one I really want to try from them is they do a double pulse alloy MIG. That thing just looks amazing. I have tried to MIG weld aluminium uh, with this. I'll probably cover that in a question further along, but yeah, it didn't go too well. Probably my fault, don't know. But yeah, a double pulse alloy MIG is definitely where it's at. If you're going to be doing um, bulk welding, the duty cycle's much better. Um, just the speed and duty cycle, you know, the continuity of it as well. So things like when I welded the whole um, alloy deck frame on the toy hauler. You know, 
hundreds of welds. I was welding all day, but I could weld for two minutes and I had to stop for like five or eight minutes or something. So I was setting timers all the time, you know, to not um, push the machine too hard to the point where it went into thermal overload and cut out. I tried to stay out of that. So um, yeah, that's the machine I'd love to review from Unimeg. Um, I'll probably reach out to them on the socials and see if maybe they've got a demo machine in Australia that I can borrow for a little bit and make a little project with it. Would absolutely love to do that, but um, yeah, all they can do is say no. So I'll hit them up and see what they say. I had quite a few questions about the fan noise. So it doesn't have fan on demand. Um, you turn the machine on. Takes a second to boot up, but it's machine on, fan on. So I guess it is a little bit loud. This is the mic on my shirt here, so I'm only that far away from it, but um, I'll see what it sounds later on when I edit. But yeah, fan on demand would be really nice. Um, I guess, you know, adding more features is probably putting the price point up, up, up. There is a number of other things that would be nice as well, but they're all sort of extras. They're not essentials. Um, sort of nice to haves, not need to haves. So yeah, look, especially when you're trying to film videos um, when you're welding, I do find I have to go turn the welder off, um, film the little segment I'm gonna do, especially if I need to talk and then turn the machine back on and start again. If you're just a normal bloke, hobby welding in the shed, it's probably not an issue. It's just, would be a nice feature. Some people asked about the gas flow for TIG. Is it auto or is it manual? So on the machine, it's a bit of a mix from what I see. The gas flow, because you can adjust it in the settings on the TIG, you know, pre-flow, post-flow, all that sort of stuff, and your flow rate is done on the regulator. Um, yeah, it is an automatic valve. Um, obviously, it kicks in when you uh, hit the trigger on the torch um, and then follows the settings that are programmed into the screen. The gas flow on the MIG, however, um, just runs all the time. It must just be a, a straight pass-through. So if you leave the MIG bottle on um, while you're MIG welding, you will be chewing gas. Um, if you're, you know, setting something up and measuring, cutting, whatever, and then, you know, say it's 20 minutes and then you're coming back to do another weld, yeah, you are burning through your gas. And for MIG welding, I'm usually only using this little E-size bottle, I think it is. Yeah, E-size. So if you chew through the Argo shield, you know, the bottle's nowhere near as big. Because I was doing so much TIG welding using pure Argon, I've got that G-size bottle on the back of the machine there. So, um, yeah, you don't want to be wasting it too much. Now that I've pretty much got the majority of my alloy welding out of the way, I'll go back to an E-size bottle for the Argon as well. Um, I might even run two of each, maybe, I don't know. Just in case you run out, you know, middle of a weekend, so you don't have to stop and wait for the gas shop to open on a Monday. But um, yeah, not really a big problem. Can you get a foot pedal for this machine? Yep, definitely can. I'll link uh, the website um, down in the description. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. That's just a place I found online where you can buy it from. From what I've seen, they're around $389. I haven't really got into stainless welding too much um, or anything where I really need that finesse of a foot pedal. Um, so I really haven't had the need to buy one yet. I really haven't even tried with the 2T versus 4T on the trigger. Uh, if you don't know what that is, um, most of the time I run it in 2T, so literally you push the trigger down to weld, release it to stop. Uh, with the 4T, you click it to start, it starts welding. You can then obviously release the trigger. You can then slide your finger over to the, you can then slide your finger over to the slide dial on the handpiece and adjust your amps from there, sort of like a pedal. Uh, and then back to the button, click it to stop. So well, I haven't even had to use that yet. I sort of just adjust my amps and everything, amps in inverted commas, by um, filler rod speed, travel speed, and that sort of stuff. So 
sort of the redneck way to do it, I guess, but that's sort of the only stuff that I'm really doing. If I got into much more precision, if the dog doesn't drink my beer, um, I'd probably want a foot pedal or something like that if I was gonna be set up on a proper welding table, you know, really trying to finesse it and be stacking dimes and that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's where you get one from, link in the description, other shops sell them. But yeah, look around, see if you get a good price. What gas do I use? Um, obviously Argo Shield uh, for MIG welding, mold steel, um, and just 100% argon for um, TIG welding, aluminium. You can go to an argon heavy, which is a argon helium blend. I think that's for really high amperage or high thickness um, welding. I haven't had to do that. Most of my welding's been in the two mil to six mil range sort of thing, mostly around three mil. And those standard gases do just fine for me, so I think that'll get you through 90% of the welding. Twelve months later, would I buy it again? Yeah, absolutely. I've been really happy with the machine. I haven't even tested out all of its features yet. Like I haven't done stick welding and that sort of stuff. I've done DC TIG, AC TIG. I've used the pulse function. Um, I've used MIG. I'd like to try and to get it to do alloy MIG, um, but probably a dedicated alloy MIG machine might be a better option. But yeah, look, 100%, zero issues with it. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of things that could be improved. Um, just as feedback to Lincoln, but I'll cover that in a question further along, go to that one. But um, yeah, 12 months later, well actually 18 months later now, yeah, definitely would buy it again. Have I had a go at MIG welding aluminium with this machine? I did put a small spool of alloy wire in it. Um, it was only stuff from Bunnings. I don't think that would make too much of a difference. Uh, I set up the settings from what I could sort of find in the manual and online. Um, and they just look like bird poo. I couldn't really get them to work. Um, but I didn't persevere with it too much. I probably tried for maybe half an hour to an hour sort of thing. I see all over the internet that people do it, like on YouTube and things like that. People do weld with it. You can get a spool gun for it, which would make it easier, but that wasn't really the issue. I was having spool guns more, um, cause you spent, yeah, I think you meant to use a Teflon liner, um, cause you're pushing the wire so far and it's soft wire. You're pushing it from the rollers all the way through to the gun. So I guess any um, kink in your hose, you know, if you bend that radius too tight, I think it can um, cause issues with the wire feed being that it's soft wire and not um, like mild steel or something like that for standard. MIG wire. I'll probably go back and try again. Um, if I do that, I'll follow up with another video in the comments or something, but yeah, no luck so far. What polarity setting do I use when TIG welding alloy? All this info is available in the Lincoln manual. It is available online, but yeah, the torch goes into the negative and the earth cable goes into the positive. All that information along with drawings and diagrams and everything is all in the Lincoln Manual. I'll put a link below to that if you can't find it online. Can you adjust the wire speed when you're welding in MIG Synergic mode? So the MIG Synergic mode is where you can dial in the thickness and it gives you the settings um, close enough for welding that thickness material. Um, I believe it also uses the transfer arc of the uh, MIG wire, the way that it's, um, like, whether it's spraying, like spray transfer. Um, if it's sort of jutting and not consistent, uh, it trims those settings to get a, a consistent weld. I believe the only settings you can adjust um, in that is voltage to fine tune it and the material thickness up and down. I found you can cheat a little bit if you dial in the thickness in synergic mode, you just remember those settings or write them down, then flick it over to MIG manual mode, um, dial those in, and then you can adjust wire speed in there if you really want to do that.
What are the MIG roller wire sizes that come with the machine? Mine came with three different rollers, I think, that I've got here. So I was just having a look. One is a, uh, a 1 mil V and a 0.8 mil V, which is the one that I run at the moment, which is just the 0.8 mil standard size wire. Also comes with another one that is 0.8 on one side and 0.6 on the other side. And one is 0.9 on one side and 0.8 on the other side. It's a little bit of duplication there, but different combinations. So really, yeah. 1 mil, 0 0.9, 0.8, 0.6. What consumables do I run? So initially I bought this Furex starter kit, comes in this nice case, has all your Pyrex cups, um, ceramic cups, all that sort of stuff. I just saw it in lots of um, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube videos, you know, people stacking dimes with this flash looking cups and things like that. Turns out you can't use them for high amperage AC welding. So it was sort of pointless, but um, once I started doing stainless and mild steel and all that, it has come in handy. What I did do though, is I got rid of these um, sort of crappy looking uh, gas collets and changed over to these, these ones that run the big nozzles. Um, you know, instead of having a, uh, a hole down the guts of it, little holes out the side, it's got that nice big gas shield comes out, sprays nice big coverage of shielding gas, uh, and you can run these bigger cups. So these are tens. They screw on there. Just a nice big tip on it. With that bigger column of gas coming out the end, you can get um, more stick out of your electrode and still get gas coverage. That's, that's sort of why you do it. That stuff as well, you can sort of get, um, well, up here in Queensland, you can get that from BOC or normal welding supply shops. So the price is actually pretty reasonable. The Furic stuff, because it's in the US, the conversion rate sort of kills you and it ends up really expensive. So um, yeah, I recommend just go with those ones locally. The tungsten I use for alloy welding is the white tip, which is the uh, zirconiated tungsten. What would I change on the welder? The only issue that I've really had with the design of it is the power cord comes out at the back in the center of the machine and it sort of runs straight into where the gas bottle goes, especially when you're using the G-size bottle. So um, if that was off to one side, so it could just come out and pass the gas bottle, that would have been heaps better. That's really a no cost mod in the manufacturer. Pretty much everything else is a nice to have. So it's only got a four meter torch lead an eight meter torch lead would be nice. Not really necessary, but just would be nice when you um, want to leave the machine in a corner and then move around and weld a fair bit. This torch also doesn't have a flex head, which is sort of handy getting into tight spots. The SIG weld unit did have that. It had an eight meter uh, torch lead and flex head. Other than that, it's only the fan on demand option would be nice and the gas flow control for MIG welding, same as the TIG, you know have it when the trigger goes on and turn off when the trigger goes off. But obviously all those things add, you know, more features, more parts, higher cost point, and it's probably gonna bring up the cost of the machine. You're probably not gonna get into a bracket where an alternative machine would be the same price, because it is pretty well priced at, you know, I think it's, you can get them for just under two grand. You know, if it added another hundred bucks, 200 bucks, I think everyone would probably be fine with that. Anyway, hopefully that's covered most of your questions. If you've got any more, drop them down in the comments of this video. I'll try and answer them in the comments or even if I've got to follow up again with another video, happy to do that. And if you like this sort of content, think about subscribing, it really helps out the channel. And if you wanna check out what I actually use this to build, I'll throw some videos up here. Go check them out. Cheers.